it's the hotel room I'm in. So what are the top three, top three things that I wish I knew before getting started with circular knitting machines? And so I wanna talk about those three big tips. What is the best yarn to use with your circular knitting machine and is cotton possible? Let's talk about beanies and the sizing of beanies. And then what else can you make on a circular knitting machine besides the beanie and the scarves? Lastly, state at the end where I'm going to be announcing a future collaboration coming up where we will discuss further in-depth projects that you can make with your circular knitting machine, expert advice, and other tips for how to best use the machines and to answer your questions. It's an exciting announcement. I'm looking forward to it. Um, in fact, JoJo's on light right now. Hi, JoJo. I'm so glad you joined me. Okay, so I would like to get right into that content. So let's talk about yarn. Hi, Kim. You're from Canada. Wow, that's great. And then New Jersey. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. So glad you could be here today. Here we go. So we're going to talk about yarn. So I'm sure all of you, like me, have struggled with the types of yarn and yarn that works on machines and work doesn't work on other machines. There's all sorts. This is just examples of brands out there. And I actually bought my circular knitting machine because I had a lot of yarn. A lot of yarn. I wanted to use up faster than crocheting could do. So uh, what I found was not every yarn type works. Um, Red Heart yarn doesn't always work on my machines. It works on some, but it doesn't work on the others. Uh, but what I have found that um, there are a few brands out there that are fairly trustworthy, although even then it could de really depend on um, maybe even that individual skein and whether it came from a different batch or not and if it works on the machine. Typically what I found is the Addy 22, it works on, it, all the yarn works on my Addy 22, whether it's worsted weight or DK weight. Um, but with the Centros, those are much more picky, and especially the Knitpick, uh, Knit Quick, uh, Michael's Loops and Thread machine. That one is very sensitive to yarns. So the different types of yarns I found that works pretty well. And let me know what you think is better. But Big Twist, uh, the acrylic yarn that you can get at Joanne's on sale right now. I found that the Karen Latte cakes are pretty good. Um, Karen Simply Soft typically works on my machines, all of them. I have um, Lion Brand Heartland is good. I love this yarn by Hobby Lobby. It pretty much works on all my machines, although I have found a few of those skeins don't always work on all of the machines. And then Pound of Love. Um, Red Heart's really iffy. Um, some of my, actually, my vintage skeins, which are like really old um, from a long time ago, they work great. And then some of the new ones I buy brand new from the store, Super Saver, just doesn't work at all. Um, Cotton, does cotton work? So it depends. I think that cotton has a lot less flexibility just uh, due to the nature of how it's made. It's a natural fiber, whereas acrylic yarn is essentially plastic. So acrylic yarn has more flex to it, whereas cotton is you know, the natural fiber. So it really depends. I have made projects with cotton yarn. Uh, I've made projects with a worsted weight cotton yarn before. It was difficult. Um, I had to use all the tricks to get it through the machine, but it did work. Uh, but definitely the super fine or fine or any DK weight cotton yarn has worked. And if I use like a softer material that I get from Hobby Yarn online, that usually works with like all of my machines and pretty well too. I've made a like a 300 row scarf and it came out great and like beautiful, no tucked or drop stitches. Uh, but again, the worsted weight I used, um, I think it was Peaches and Cream or one of those brands here in the U.S. And it it was really hard to work with. Went through, though, because usually when I make purses and things like that, I like to use the cotton yarn. So the blends tend to be OK, though. They can if they're not fuzzy, they're good, like a blend between acrylic and cotton because they have a little more flexibility. So that's the kind of yarn I like to use. And um, let me know, though, in the comments what yarn works best for you guys. All right, these are the different machines I was talking about. That Those are the ones I have. I also have a couple others, actually, that it's not on there, but that's okay. Um, we'll talk more about machines later. But basically, for the Addy 22 pin, as I mentioned, all of my yarn goes through that really smoothly, really easily. It's just the cast on that can be a little difficult. Um, and then the Addy 46 is my other one that most of the yarn goes through that. Uh, I do have some tips 
on how to get yarn through any machine. I have a video coming out Friday where I talk about different methods. Like everyone talks about the like silicone earplugs and, you know, clips and weight, adding weight and things like that. And it, it actually really does work because there's um, impeccable um, yarn from Michael's um, Loops and Threads. That one's a little bit thicker of a worsted weight yarn. And so it doesn't go through my central 40 or 48 until I use these tips and tricks that I'll share with you on Friday in my video. And then now I've been able to make a lot of things with it. Um, in fact, this one was made with a 40 pin and this is impeccable yarn. And it was because I used those earplugs and the, the weights on it to, to get it to get through the machine. So let's talk about beanies. All right. So I think that, well, that's just my example of cotton yarn that I used on a machine. That's cotton yarn. Okay. So beanies and scarves. So probably the reason circular knitting machines became as popular as they did is because of this viral TikTok video uh, that came out a couple years ago during the pandemic. And I wanna share with you um, this video because I thought it'd be interesting. And here I will show you um, what it is because I thought it'd be interesting. This is the video that was really popular in, I don't know, a while ago, whoops. And she had, I think, like 19 million or something views. It was a lot. And, um, you know, she was using the drill and all this. And, you know, there's a lot of negative comments there. But, you know, this is really, I think, what made it popular, what made beanies super popular and what made, I mean, not beanies, circular knitting machines very popular. And, you know, it's a lot of what people do now. Um, they get a circular knitting machine. They want to make a beanie. And that's great. Beanies are fun. They're easy to make, especially if you do the tube version. It takes like 30 minutes to make a beanie and it's, it's a lot of fun. But there is so much more to these machines than the beanie. Um, and I want to share that with you today. It's, who's, whose first project was a beanie? You know, comment below. Uh, I will admit my very first project was the beanie because, you know, it was it's easy to make and it's fun. All right. Well, okay, let's talk a little more about beanies. Uh, I forgot. I have this guide I wanted to share with y'all. And basically, um, you know, I get a lot of questions on how can you know what size to get for an adult, a youth, a toddler, a baby. And it, it shows you here, um, you know, adult is about 108. And, um, but if you want the flip up kind, it's a little bigger. It's about a 130. And it, youth 105 so it kind of this is a little uh guide for you and jojo says her first was a beanie and it was horrible <laughs> i think mine was too because i used um well i had a 46 at the time but then i got the 48 um but i still i used the 46 and it was really really small and i think um there were so many drop stitches or tuck stitches i mean and uh, it just had all these gaps in it you know you get from your tuck stitches <laughs> and um kim says she likes Brene premium okay Good to know. Good to know. Thank you, Kim. So this um, little chart and then these little charts kind of to design, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, making more patterns and colors with your beanies. Um, I keep pointing this one. This is not a tube one. This is, um, I just put out a, a video, I think last week. Um, this is not using um, like your standard tube. It's actually doing like to um, a pan, uh, not a panel. It's using tubes, but it's using a 22 pin and then a 40 pin machine to make it. Uh, that's the video, though, on my channel. You can watch that. Um, but this guide here I'm showing you is um, just a way that you can design your beanies using, you know, drawing it, coloring it. I saw this one lady had, uh, like, it, it was like a coloring pad just like this. She gave it to some kids, and they colored it, and she was able to design her beanies based off that. So just a fun idea and thoughts of how you can make your beanies a little more unique or fun. All right. Next thing I want to talk about is there are more than to these circular knitting machines than beanies. Boring, right? <laughs> so it can get boring. Scarves as well. You know, you just make a tube of what, 200 to 300, depending on what size person you're, you're trying to fit that scarf on. Um, let's talk about something else. So what else can you make with a circular knitting machine? What do you guys make? Comment below. What kind of things do you guys like to make with your circular knitting machine outside of the beanie and the scarves? I I think my very first project after the first beanie was this blanket. It's a, um, you know, I, I want to do color changes. I 
I just uh, drew out a picture basically on an Excel sheet. No, I drew it by hand and then put it on an Excel sheet. And I just put like all these colors that I wanted to have. And I wanted to have like a rainbow fun blanket. And so I put that on an Excel sheet. I estimated, you know, the blocks and how big they should be. And then out came my rainbow block blanket, which I love. It's thick because it's tube. So it's a very thick blanket. Um, what else do you guys like to do? Let's see. Dean. Let's see what she's saying here. She says she has two machines, an Addy 22 and an Addy 46, and her first project was a beanie, and she just made a blanket. Oh, the ombre. Nice. I bet that looks awesome. And JoJo, she says, loves making toys. Me too. Me too. And Nadine, you did strips. Okay, is this for your, your blanket, I'm guessing? With the fringe. Yeah, awesome. Kareen is saying you like stuffed animals. Nice. And crochet amigurumi. Yeah, me too. Very cool. That's why I decided to start making amigurumi as well, because I was doing crochet and I said with these machines, I could probably do something faster and just as cute. And so that's what I did. I ended up making this little turtle up in the corner, the blue one. And then just recently I published or I, uh, I published my blueberry turtle on my channel, but um, turtles, because I love turtles, hence the name and um, other toys that I like to make. Um, the duck squish, really easy. I made that with the 40 pin. I think I actually used the knit quick machine and made a 40 pin um, duck on that. My inspiration was squish mallows. Those are <laughs> adorable and cute. And so that's why I like to make these fat little animals. Uh, <laughs> what kind of animals do you guys like to make? I think my favorite was the turtle, but I'm particular to turtles. And Corrine says she made the turtle pattern last week. <laughs> well, if you're in the Facebook group, group, I hope you share that picture with us. I love to see these turtles. A lot of fun. And so leggy froggy I made because the crochet leggy froggy was super popular. So I said, well, I guess I'll make a knitting version of it. And and actually, you know, would, I was doing some vendor markets and sold a few, though, or I sold a lot of those. Um, they're easy and they're kind of cute. And um, keychains, keychains are really fun and fast, easy to make, cute little gifts for friends and kids, um, like pickle guys and mini ducks, the polar bear and <clears throat> candy corn for Halloween or a little ladybug. Um, so I like to make all sorts of different keychains. I don't make any videos on these, unfortunately, but they're pretty easy to make. Um, I use my 22 pin a lot. And that's why I really love my added 22 pin because it, um, it takes all the yarn and you can make these cute little toys and pretty fast. And then they're great gifts or things to sell at markets, if that's what you're into. What kind of keychains would you like me to make? That's that's a question I'd like to know because uh, I'm always trying to think of other ideas of what to make. I only made the polar bear because my son's favorite stuffed animal is a polar bear. So that's why I made it for him. <laughs> and characters. Um, I don't make these too often because... Um, I don't know, but I just, I, I do sometimes. So I know Pikachu is real popular. I've made a few like Pokemon ball pouches are fun. They're pretty easy to use the 22 machine and just do some red and white. And I crochet the circle on it and it's like a pouch. So you can put like things inside of it. I've made different things like that where it's more character based. Um, so that's another thing you can do is, you know, think of, um, I don't know, like bluesy or some popular character on TV that you like and try to you know, design it, draw it out and make your character. It's not, it's not too difficult. Um, you just got to be kind of creative. I, I mean, I use a lot of inspiration, like I said, from things I see on TV or something else. Little bees, pretty easy to make. Zombie for Halloween. <laughs> and then snowman, Christmas, you know, so like holiday themed animals you can make or things that you can make on your machine. Pumpkins. Um, of course, I do use a lot of crochet. I intertwine my crochet in a lot of my circular knitting machine projects. It's just a fun way to do it for me. And of course the chicken squish, very popular right now. Um, and I love seeing all the different chickens that people make and all their variations of colors and the way they do their the, um, the head. Again, it requires a little crochet to do that top part of it, which I know turns a lot of people off, but I hope that it doesn't. In my video, I hope I explain it slowly and well enough that everyone can do the crown of the, the chicken to really build out its face. Somebody had a good idea where they 
added um, weight to the bottom of their chicken squish so that it's more like a doorstop. So you add like a bag of rice that you would probably need to sew a fabric pouch and put your rice, and you put it at the bottom of your chicken. So then it's a weight that you can use to, I don't know, keep your door open or closed. Um, I thought that was a cool idea so that, you know, you can only have so many plushies and toys, right? Or maybe never enough. <laughs> so having a weight on the bottom makes it kind of a useful little item. So the chicken squishes are some of my favorites. I love seeing everyone's different chicken squish. Did you guys make a chicken squish yet? I'd love to see it if you did. Let's see. Go to the next here. So this is the big announcement I wanted to share. Um, I just already shared it, I guess. Whoops. <laughs> well, JoJo's here too, so that's okay. So um, March 13th um, at the same time, so 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or... 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It will be a live collaboration with me and JoJo where I'm going to be basically putting questions at her. <laughs> and she so graciously agreed to join and kind of do a little interview, talking a lot about um, different projects, uh, what else she makes on circular machines, going to some of her process of design and projects, and just different tips and advice for people who have maybe never done circular knitting mach machines before or they're new to it and what um you know she wants to teach us um about what you can do now uh, to prevent any like issues that maybe she went through and then another fun thing is we're going to talk about favorite machines you know what's her favorite machine what's my favorite machine i'm going to do a poll for everyone else so think about that and other expert advice so i just want you to know that march 13th 1600 or 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, join us to discuss projects, expert tips, advice, and the best machines and why. And also we're gonna do an answering question session. And, um, nope, she said not yet. Oh, <laughs> well, there's the announcement. I hope you all join us um, today. I really appreciate everyone joining. If there's any questions, I didn't see any come through. Otherwise I will answer them, um, but I'm looking through, I don't see any. Um, okay. So thank you all for joining us. I really enjoyed uh, just sharing a little bit about what's going on here with these. Um, you know, I wanted to talk about the different types of yarn, uh, Bernay Premium. I'm going to add that to the list now or try it out. And the beanies and, um, you know, different projects that you can make um, and how you can kind of create ideas on what to do with your knitting machine. You know, take inspiration from cute things that you like or you know, even useful things, you know, purses and bags and totes, stuff like that. Um, a lot of these things, like I said, I I kind of use inspiration from both crochet as well as um, just TV or movies or cute things that I enjoy. 